everybody. Welcome back to Mountaintop Homesteaders. Uh, today's video is going to be giving a discussion on the, the cattle panel greenhouse back here, how our tomatoes are doing, how the peppers are doing, and uh, an, an issue I had with our irrigation. So I did a little bit of an upgrade with our irrigation, and uh, we're now using solar energy only for the irrigation, which is wonderful, but uh, I'll go ahead and go over that and, and give you an update on everything so let's go ahead and get started before I do that uh, please go ahead and give us a like and give us a subscribe because we love you guys and we love hearing your comments and about everything that you got going on and helping me out with anything I got going on so anyways go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and let's go ahead and start our tour so today is a nice 80 degree day uh, as you can see I got some moisture built up in the greenhouse um, not as bad as it was before. Uh, we've been having low 40s at night recently, so I'm glad to see we're back up in the 80s. If we take a look over here, this is what I had going on yesterday. So I went through the greenhouse and tore out all the excess tomato plant and all the nastiness that was in there, and it just kind of got away from us. So. What I did was expose the existing tomatoes that we have left so they can ripen and, and do a better job because we're down to probably about a month or less before we get a real good frost here. So uh, we'll start on the outside of the greenhouse. I purchased a 100-watt uh, solar panel, and uh, I think all my stuff I got off of Amazon. I'll try and put everything in the uh, description of what I purchased, but it wasn't bad. Uh, price wise and I went ahead and bought walk up here I went ahead and bought the cables too that to connect into it so I didn't have to splice anything and also this will allow me to add in additional panels in the future as necessary as need be so uh, I just wired the the solar panel up to a couple PVC pipes that I had laying around I just cut it in half and drove those on the ground and then secured the panel to that so far so good uh, we're definitely not getting the sun that we were getting before so the charging is a little bit down but it's enough to run the the pump that I have for our irrigation and as for the rest of the irrigation uh, I think I went over this before I've got a hose that is running into the bottom of the cattle panel greenhouse and it is connected to my two rain barrels over here sorry for the sun glare so these two rain barrels hold 50 gallons a piece i've got them linked together with a couple pieces of hose and then I've got a Y adapter here, so I can vary uh, which one I want to pull the water from, that sort of thing. Because if one's not full and the other one's full, we don't want to pull anything, pull any water, that sort of thing, if we don't need to. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, greenhouse and what we got going on inside. I'll finish up with the, uh, the solar panel and the irrigation system here. And then we'll talk about the greenhouse itself. So what we got here is where the uh, the wire that's connected to the solar panel runs in. I've just got it tacked to the uh, my raised bed, which makes it nice. And over here is all the goods. So what? we did I early on I talked about a failure that I had so early on uh, in one of the other videos you saw that I had a brushed uh, uh, a brushed pump and not knowing completely what that meant I wasn't worried about it and that sort of thing uh, the pump finally gave out I did have it wired into our Wi-Fi system and I had a a Wi-Fi 110 volt switch that was controlling that so I could put it on a timer it just didn't cut it I wasn't impressed uh, the pump only lasted a couple months before it actually burned out so you can imagine uh, having to replace the brushes all the time on that it's just not cost-effective 
So what we did, I bought this off of Amazon. It's an RV or a marine um, water pump. It's about $60. Uh, I think total I probably spent around $200 on this system, which is an expandable system. So I got that. It is ultra quiet. It's impressive. It's even got a little inline filter. And then we've got our charge controller here. And that's where everything connects to, of course. That's your brains of the system. And then I've got the same type of uh, inline 12 volt timer that I've used in the other greenhouse. I absolutely love this thing. It lets me have 16 different preset um, times to water. And so right now I'm just watering once a day due to the weather that we're having. But uh, we were watering twice a day and so on and so forth. We could change it up to 16 different programmable uh, days in there. And it's just great. The battery here, uh, I got that at our local Harbor Freight. I went ahead and instead of worrying about, um, see if I can get in here, instead of worrying about the waterproofing too much with the shrink tubing, I went ahead and just got that, uh, I don't know what they call it, but that's the, the water resistant, waterproofing, paintable paste stuff. It's like an insulator that you just paint on. So I've got zero issues with uh, any of the moisture that's in here. I have not had any issues with moisture getting into my charge controller, that sort of thing, nor my, um, my timer. So I'm pretty happy with this system that I, I built out and uh, it, it seems to be doing pretty good. It's in, been running for, I guess, almost two months now. And uh, what I did in the raised bed itself is I've got a garden hose here and that's running into a rain bird setup so I just again I'm an Amazon guy I got on Amazon I have 40 something dollars I guess I picked up a rain bird uh, starter kit which actually gave me the uh, the hose here the thicker hose it gives you a tool to punch the holes in the hose and then you're able to add in your nozzles and that sort of thing. Now the nozzles are separate. They didn't come with a Rainbird kit. I went with a misting nozzle. The only problem that I found with these nozzles, and I guess I missed it on Amazon, is there's no way to shut them off. So it's either all or nothing. You can vary the mist on them, but if you're not, like for instance, this one's not being utilized, it's still going to mist and, and use rainwater that is kind of a waste of, of rainwater. So. Um, that's something that I got to look into. I got to figure out how I can stop up these holes or I've actually used my, uh, watering adapters from my other greenhouse on them. And they're down here. These red ones, orangey ones, they actually have shut off valves and you can shut them off. So that's what I've used down there when I pulled up some plants and they're not being utilized, but, uh, Anyways, I think that's the biggest issue I found is that these work really, really well. They mist really well. They're fairly inexpensive, but you can't shut them off. And that's the only feature I dislike. So, um, I don't know. It's not the end of the world, but it's something that I would like to, to fix. And I should have seen that in the beginning. But uh, anyways... The system's working really well. It's very powerful with this pump. It definitely has enough power to um, to run some other other lines out of it. So I could run lines um, outside of the greenhouse to do other things. Uh, I could run lines, you know, various places. It's definitely got a lot of power. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, as for the greenhouse itself, we did have some problems. Um, and I've been trying to attribute what those problems are from. And what I'm finding is that the problems are probably stemming from a little bit of overcrowding, a little bit of not watering enough. And we also ended up uh, a month late with our planting. And I think that that hurt us. I had some sickly looking plants. I was trying to make them better um, before planting them outdoors. We had a, the grow 
lights and stuff in the basement, that sort of thing. But um, I think we got a lot of factors going on and I was trying to avoid the frost. So according to my notes that I keep, uh, we didn't plant until the end of May. And I think that hurt our growing season a bit. So we've got a lot of green tomatoes right now, praise the Lord. But uh, are they all gonna ripen before we start getting hit with frost? Probably not, but uh, um, something else to discuss is how I'm holding up our tomato plants. I went the cheap route. I didn't want to use any extra room by having a trellis in here, that sort of thing. So all I did was I took some twine, secured it to the, the cattle panels, and then I used these nice little, uh, let me see if I can get a better one here. Uh, let me grab it from here. And I think they call them tomato clips. Here's one here that's being utilized. And here is what they look like. And again, you can get them on Amazon. Imagine that. I like Amazon. So these little clips, you can see this little nodule in here. That's where you're going to put your twine and then they just clip around the stem of the plant. These are awesome. They're inexpensive, they're reusable. I haven't had one break. Uh, there's various brands out there, but these things are just great. So that's what I've used all over the greenhouse to be able to hold up our tomato plants and keep them secure and keep them as, as happy as we've been able to. So when the tomato plant gets out, gets you know, as high as the roof, we were trying to top them, um, just cutting the first inch off or so before it hits the roof. Again, we let it get a little bit out of control just by not staying on top of it. So that was part of the, the stuff that I did uh, yesterday, trimming everything, pulling everything out. So now the sun is able to get in here, get to every single tomato, ripen them up. I've got good airflow now and that sort of thing. Our pepper plants have been doing pretty good. Uh, we've got quite a bit of jalapenos and the other ones I think are a New Mexico Slim that we've got. And also my daughter gifted us with some more pepper plants, some jalapenos and some green peppers. We've got a couple green peppers going. Uh, next year I'll definitely put these in the bed as opposed to being in pots, but they did pretty good in the pots. I was, I've been surprised. So here's a uh, Virginia, um, not a Virginia, a a New Mexico Slim, I believe these are. And here's a green pepper that's coming. And I think there's another green pepper here somewhere. Here, down here in the bottom. We've got another green pepper coming. So we've got a good yield coming. Is it all gonna be done before a frost hits? That's gonna be the question. I'm gonna have to say no, um, but we'll see what happens. Our basil did really good this year. We were actually able to dry a lot of it. And it looks like we've got a whole nother bunch that's good to go for drying. Um, so that's about it. That's our quick update from the cattle panel greenhouse, how everything worked this year. Um, there'll be some changes I wanna do in the off season. Uh, mainly I need to tape up these edges of the, uh, the plastic, the outside and inside because I'm getting bugs in here, I'm getting spiders in the folds, I'm getting cicadas in the folds, that sort of thing. So I wanna get rid of that and not have to deal with that. So uh, I've had a comment or two that there's some UV tape that you can buy off of Amazon. I appreciate those comments. So I'm definitely gonna take a look at that. Um, airflow is also an issue in here. So I do have the front and the back open in the greenhouse so I can get adequate airflow. And I do have one fan, I think next year, uh, early spring, we'll add in a second fan. So we've got a fan at each end is what I'm, I'm planning on doing. So uh, anyways, leave any comments that you want. I appreciate you uh, watching and subscribing the channel. And um, we've got some future updates coming that I will do in a video up next. Uh, about some ideas that we have around the homestead and what we want to do and get ready in the next couple months for the winter and uh, what we'll have in place for next spring's growing season. So I love you guys. God bless you guys. And until next time, have a good one.